Hi, and welcome to another edition of Pastoral Thought uh, with our Aberdeen Baptist Church uh, YouTube channel. And this week, uh, I thought I'd tackle a subject that's less academic, less uh, theologically based, although there is something there, uh, and more practical, but probably uh, more scary for some, for sure. Uh, it's one of those topics uh, uncomfortable to talk about, and uh, we'll get introduced to it with the idea of uh, weight loss, although that's not exactly what we're talking about. But many of us probably, if we're honest, do not have a great body image. Um, uh, I don't want to tell you how much I weigh, but I weigh too much, right? And uh, I carry mine out in front of my stomach. And so I'm constantly thinking, I need to lose weight, but I'm not very good at losing weight. Some, pe some people get into that yo-yo uh, of uh, constant cycle of losing weight and then weight finding it back, finding them again and then losing it. And, um, and others of us just seem to slowly keep going up, 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 up. It's like, uh, don't like it. Um, it's hard. I'm starting to do a little bit of exercise and I find that you know, doing sit-ups, uh, my stomach keeps jabbing me in the way as I'm trying to, it's too big, got to gotta get smaller, but, but I like food. So anyway, um, we're not really talking about weight loss. Many people try weight loss. We're, tra we're talking about when it becomes an obsession and that's an eating disorder. Um, we would re usually refer to those as uh, anorexic or bulimic disor disorders. And uh, the two are, are certainly related. Um, anorexia is the basically uncontrolled weight loss, usually kind of considered if you've lost like 25% of your uh, full body weight within about four to six months, you're probably uh, obsessing over it and have become anorexic. The anorexic feels like they're too fat. So even when they're, you know, skin and bones, they've lost lots of weight, they still think they need to lose more and they, and they have uh, errant body image thinking, uh, destructive body image thinking. The bulimic wants to maintain the ideal weight and so they do, they're deathly afraid of any weight gain. So the, the anorexic will deny themselves food and take that martyr's approach to food and, and wither away. The bulimic will binge, eat, they want that pleasure of eating, they want that comfort, they want that satisfaction, but then they will purge either via laxatives or, or, or vomit it or whatever, but they will purge that out before it can be processed by their body and add to their, to their weight. And so they're, they're both very similar in thinking, but uh, they, they both are insidious. Uh, it sounds like a good idea to, to deny yourself this or to binge and purge, and it's kind of the perfect solution to outwit nature, so to speak. Uh, but it, eventually it no longer, and it doesn't take long, it no longer becomes a, a way of satisfying hunger, but it becomes a, really a terrifying compulsion that dominates and the world just focuses on this issue. It's the hidden secret. It's the demon in their skeleton in the closet. Uh, anyway, I want to give a couple of statistics and then just a, a quick thought on this topic. I, I mean, statistics tell us 90 to 95 percent of anorexic or bulimic um, patients or people struggling with that are female. Uh, here are some common things that have been found out over the years, and they all make sense. The anorexic and the bulimic have a poor self-image. Someone along the line has kind of maybe hurt them, and so they, they, they don't see themselves in a proper balanced light. Uh, they are usually high achievers, uh, want to be the perfect person. They are also, uh, as children and youth and even into their adults, they were, they were the model child. They were compliant, obedient, respectful. Uh, they were nice, intelligent, and cooperative. And so they, are, they have this urge to please. And they're also in denial. Uh, they usually do not, they've distorted their body image and they deny what's really obvious to the rest of the people around them that they have a destructive problem. And I wouldn't say it's a body, it's not even a physical problem. To me, here's where I'm going with this, and I'm not an expert on it, so I don't want you to dismiss uh, what any experts say, but 
it seems from the limited amount of exposure that it's not really a physical problem that, hey, I feel like I'm overweight. It's a soul problem. It's a soul that is not at rest. And the soul cannot say, I'm okay with myself. And so we focus on the body because that's one area we think we can control and uh, change. We focus on that in order to try and help us feel better about the soul. Uh, just one short story I read about Michelangelo, the famous sculptor, painter, artisan. Um, one day he was looking for a piece of marble to do a sculpture. And so he went to this um, fellow who, uh, tradesman who had sold, cut and sold marble. And he was showing him various large examples of, of marble that he could use. And Mike, uh, he, he, there was a piece that had obviously fallen and broken in parts and parts of it were chipped off and other parts of it had rough edges and scraped. And the guy was just kind of passing him by and Michelangelo stopped and looked at it and says, oh no, we've got better, we've got better. Shows him these other ones and Michelangelo says and looked at the, at the broken, chipped, scratched piece and says, no, I will take this one. There's an angel inside this stone and I need to release it. And I think that's what God's kind of heart to those who would have that kind of disorder that their souls would be at, at rest is there's an angel in here and i excuse me if i if i use that term not quite theologically but there's there's a person of beauty in here that i need to release and i think that's what psalm 139 really talks about uh, we we need souls that are at rest because god has uh, is involved in our life uh, and loves us. And so you, you probably know these verses. Let me just read them with you today. Uh, Psalm 139. I'll just start in verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Uh, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect or unperfect, that means yet being incomplete. And in thy book, all my members were written, which is in continuance, uh, and were, they are fast joined when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are, they thought, are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake, I am still with thee. It, hey, we're all going to bounce in our body image and, you know, try and lose weight or, or try and exercise. And, and even Paul says bodily exercise, it profits some, to some degree. But it's when we get out of balance, it's because our soul is, is looking for something. We're looking to counterbalance a soul that is desperately out of balance. Um, I, would, uh, I would just encourage you to take time to spend time with God to restore your soul. Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, he knows our thoughts. He is. He does not. He, some people have the wrong image of God. They think that he's there correcting them. To, he's, got, he's going tisk tisk to everything they do wrong. Uh, yeah, we are sinners, uh, but we have our love with an everlasting love. And the, the creator of the universe knows every bit about you and thoroughly loves you, even though we are desperately flawed and cursed people. Um, in Christ, we have the solution to the curse, and uh, He is our. Uh, we are joint heirs with Him, and so I, I would encourage you take a little bit of time, talk to God. Hey, just if you feel like you're not, you can't read Psalm 139 and say, "Wow, I am overcome with Your thoughts towards me." Uh, pray that uh, God's truth would break through in this area in your life. Anyway, as uh, we've already mentioned, we'll be meeting face-to-face uh, -face Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and 10.30. A lot of people have responded, and I know some people respond and said they're not ready to come back yet. Well, that's fine. We totally understand that. We'll see how the um, COVID transmission rates um, and projections move over the next coming weeks and what our government says in response to that. But uh, for now, we'll, we'll be meeting and uh, Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, greet each other from a distance, and uh, we'll work out the bugs as we go along. God bless you all, and uh, we'll see uh, you Sunday. And if not, on uh, we'll be we'll be uh, posting uh, the Sunday sermon online uh, sometime in the future during the week. God bless.